Joining me right now with more, LMTR CIO Brad Lehmansdorf, along with Empyrean Wealth Management President Kimberly Foss. Kimberly, you know, I've been telling everybody to just take a deep breath because I think part of what's going on here is the realization that we're going to actually get back to normal. And by normal, I mean an environment where the Federal Reserve has to raise rates because it should. It's the right thing to do. And by the way, you should expect that in 10 years or 30 years, things are going to be better enough that you have a little bit more than 2% inflation. Heck yeah, Trish. I'm right there with you. And you remember back a year and a half ago when the feds did declare that they wanted to get back to normalization by the year 2019. So that would mean about 3%, you know, so we've got a ways to go. So yeah, I think the volatility yesterday was spooked and Friday was spooked by the Fed saying, hey, we may raise this three times or more. And that causes this volatility in addition to high frequency trading algorithms, the whole mm -hmm. thing. But Bottom line is the fundamentals, like you said, of this market are very, very strong. We've got hourly er earnings, as you had mentioned, too, 2.9% up from last year. Wait, you know, jobs are increasing. This is good for the economy. That means our economy is strong underneath. This is technical pullback. Yeah. I was buying yesterday. I bought in my own accounts yesterday and telling my clients to buy in their accounts as well. So this is nothing to fear, basically. All right. Well, I, I think you and I are in agreement, but I got, I got someone here on set who has been bearish for what? Did you say eight months now? That's right. Oh, you missed out on a well, lot, so, huh? so we also run a bear fund as well under the symbol of HDGE. And so, you know, we, we so you, you're we're paying to be bearish. You have no choice. Well, you well, have no, no, no. to be so, bearish. So, so in all fairness, I just started a SQZZ ETF, which is all long. All we focus on are highly shorted stocks. OK, so that's not totally fair to because I'm running a long and a short fund. All right. Why but, are you so, what, what's motivating you? How do you get out and sell your I mean, other than just being a hedge against a market that keeps going up? Uh, do you really believe we're heading for far lower ground? Okay, so, so look, the, the market over a long period of time, like you were mentioning, goes up. And I think that everyone will agree to that. Mm -hmm. However, there are periods in time like 2000, like 2006, 7, and like now, where the markets have gotten way, way ahead of themselves. We think that every, and we know that uh, cash uh, in mutual fund uh, managed. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I hate to throw 2007 into the mix. I'll just say that because, you know, that was a credit crisis and it was a completely different animal than anything that we're seeing right now. So I don't want to make that comparison, but I got you on the year 2000. So so when you even uh, and, and to go to back to your point, mm -hmm. the economy's strong, correct? Right. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. Although in the crash of 87, we dropped over 20 percent in a day mm -hmm. and there was no recession thereafter either. Right. So. So you can have a correction in the market without and destroying the economy. Right. So my point is, is that when you see the stock market trading at the same price to sales that it was in 2000, mm -hmm. buckle up. You better be ready for a minimum of some consolidation. Okay, walk us through price to sales. And then I want to get Kimberly back in. But you're talking about price to sales ratio. What is it right now and why does it alarm you? So the price to sales ratio and it's it's not calculated daily. And a lot of people talk about PE, by the way, price to earnings. And so 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 our opinion has been that we're forensic accountants. We think that the marketplace and the S&P 500 uh, has been manipulating their earnings to a higher level mm -hmm. by issuing cheap debt and buying back stock. That's been going on prevalently all over the street. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, that helps the earnings, and that's something that they're not going to be able to grab to going forward. Mm -hmm. Higher interest rates are also going to be a little more expensive to fund growth. Mm -hmm. So while there is a better platform for better growth with better taxes and a more stable economy, the stock market is as high as priced on a price-to-sales ba basis as it's been. A normal price-to-sales ratio is maybe 1.5, 1 to 1.5. 1 right now, we're over 2.5. So it's a but very isn't it rich in part because people know tax reform is coming. And so consumers are going to have more money to spend. They'll go out and spend it. That will affect earnings. And let's not forget also affecting earnings. The fact that these companies get to keep more of what they've earned. Uh, no question about it. But the, the, it comes back to the point where if we're going to be growing that quickly, then interest rates, you're looking at a 10 year of probably three and a half to four and not 2.8, yeah. which is going to fight with the stock market. So. Yeah, so that's, you know, Kimberly, to get back to this sort of push pull, I mean, I still look at it and say, OK, you know, I'm willing to give up a couple thousand points on the Dow. 
provided, you know, there's some opportunity for savers out there, right? Because, you know, I, I think about retirees and, you know, they're chasing down Puerto Rican debt <laughs> despite a, a bankruptcy because there's a hope of some yield. And wouldn't it be nice if we actually had yield out there so you didn't have to get into crazy aggressive products? Absolutely. Trish, that's what I used to say to my clients in the last 10 years, like looking for yield in all the wrong places to quote a freight. Anyway, mm -hmm. it was a joke. But, uh, but the fact of the matter is interest rates, rising interest rates are a good thing as well, because yes, a lot of retirees do live off the income off their portfolios. And that's what I've been doing for 10 years with my clients. It's been very, very difficult. So, but when they have extra income from that income off their investments, guess what? They go put it back into the marketplace again. So that helps the economy as well. Again, just like you were saying too, the tax reform, this is repatriation. I mean, Apple's bringing jobs back, bringing money back here. They, I know that's going to be back in, you know, dividends, uh, you know, increasing dividends and also increasing and they'll buy back their own stock. But again, this is all good for the economy. That's only, you know, goes to 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 just reinforce the idea that the, the economy is growing stronger. Mm -hmm. Earnings of companies are growing stronger. That's just more money in people's pockets that, you know, the pie is not finite. The pie is growing. This is what America is about is growing our wealth. The stock market is the greatest wealth creation tool in the universe. And people from the waitress to Warren Buffett have access to that. And that's what makes people more richer, better, and have a better life. Brad and Kimberly, thank you so much. Good thank to you. see you both.